Hey, thanks, man. Thank you, Rob. You see, Baker just talked about the frustration that he's feeling out there. C can you sense that as a teammate that, that you see him, you know, banged up, not being able to do what he normally can do and, and, and how tough that can be on him? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we've all played banged up at some point in our career, and it's uh, it's not easy. I mean, it's not easy physically to start, um, and then mentally it it, it, it drains you um, because there are things that you've always been able to do, and then you know you can't do those things the same way, and you know that that's frustrating. Um, and, and I think that's something that people overlook is kind of that mental grind of of playing hurt for for a long time in the middle of the season. Um, it's just kind of exhausting. Um, so it, it, it's definitely tough, but I, I think again, Baker's Baker's fighting uh, hard for us right now. Uh, and, and we really appreciate that from him. Um, but no, it, it's, it's never easy. It's never easy. I was going to say, nobody knows that mental grind maybe better than you do. <laughs> all things considered, JC, you feel like you guys are in a pretty good spot. I mean, all the goals are obviously all still attainable. You're above 500. Yeah, there's been some problems, but but in general, do you feel pretty good about the way things are going? Yeah, I mean, we're we're a six and five football team. Uh, we've got a really big game against the Ravens this week, uh, then the bye week, and then you know we got a, a stretch of, of really good teams we're going to be playing to end the season. But all, all the things we wanted to accomplish at the beginning of the year before the season started are still attainable. Uh, they're still out in front of us. So um, you know, the season hasn't gone exactly how we wanted it to. There are things we wish we would have done differently or played better at, at times. But again, I, everything we wanted to accomplish week one of the season going forward is still out there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tom. We'll go to Matt Fontana. Yeah, JC, I mean, when you, you're playing the game and, and you see Baker and it seems like he's playing on one leg hobbling, does it like shock you at all that he's still in the game and it doesn't come out? No, I mean, Baker, Baker's a, a tough player and, and he wants to fight with us. Um, and, you know, we know he's, he's got our back. We got his back. Um, and, and he's a, he's a tough guy. So no, it, it doesn't, we, we know what he's dealing with and um, we, we know it's not easy for him to play, but, you know, we know he, he's up for the task and he's going to play with us. Uh, we want him out there with us. Thanks, Matt. Our next question will go to Jeff Chanel. See, what is your um, theory on why points have been so hard to come by in five of the last six games? Yeah, I mean, specifically yesterday, I mean, penalties killed us. Um, you know, we, we had a bunch of drives stall uh, because of penalties. So that that's stuff that we should easily be able to clean up. I mean, those are those are just mental mistakes. Um, some are combative, which, you know, those, those you're going to get during the, the course of the game. But um, some of them are just mental lapses, pre-snap penalties. Um, that'll stall a drive. All of a sudden you go from being in, a, in the right down and distance or ahead of the sticks to to playing from behind the sticks and having to make a big play in order to keep the drive going. Um, so penalties have been been a big part of it. And we, we can be cleaner as an offense. I mean, we're not playing our best football right now as an offense, but uh, it doesn't mean we we can't. We know what we need to do. Um you know, we, we didn't put up the amount of points we wanted to yesterday, but we still get the win. And, and that's really, in the end, all that matters when a, in the grand scheme of things is if you can get the, uh, the enough, enough wins to get to the playoffs, that's all that matters. So there are things we're going to clean up, things we're going to get better at. But um, uh, we're, again, like I said earlier, we're, we're, we're still, you know, everything's in front of us that we want to accomplish. Thank you, Jeff. Nate Ulrich, go ahead. Hey, JC, um, when we just talked to Baker, you know, he was telling us that, you know, all he cares about winning and but he's going to be frustrated when he does things that make it harder for you guys to win. And I'm just wondering, did he have any kind of conversation with the locker room or did he talk to you or other guys about that? Uh, about just rephrase that again for me. Well, he just told us that, you know, basically, you know, the, the question was, you know, he walked straight off the field. And to the locker room after the game without, you know, shaking hands, without celebrating a win with his teammates. And that's uncharacteristic of him. Um, and he said, but all he cares about is winning, but he's going to be frustrated when he does things that make it harder for you as a team to win. But he thinks his teammates know 
you know, how he feels. And, you know, I'm just wondering if he expressed any of that to you guys since that moment after the game. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't know that happened at the time. And we, we kind of have our, our tradition after a win and what we do as an offensive line and, you know, the quarterbacks and running backs. So, I mean, Baker was there for that and, you know, we celebrated in the locker room and Baker was there for that. So I, I don't think any of us really, um, you know, immediately after the game on the field isn't really a, a celebration in my mind. That's more, you know, going to talk to the guys that you've, you know, have relationships with on the other team and check in on them and see how they're doing. And then once you get back to the locker room, that's really the time to to celebrate and be, you know, with your teammates and, and enjoy those those winning moments. So, um, you know, I, I take nothing from from Baker heading into the locker room. Um, Again, we're we're all human beings, and and you know we get frustrated, um, and 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 that's you know not really a worry of mine. Uh, again, he was he was there with us in the locker room when when we usually celebrate, so I, I wouldn't have even notice that even happened. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Nate. Dan Lobby, go ahead. Uh, hey, JC. Nate, Nate actually took my question, but I'll ask you about a couple of guys that might be back this week. Um, Kevin told us Jack Conklin uh, could be back, so so we'll start with him. Um, have, have you talked to Jack at all and, and what would it mean to kind of get him back in the lineup? Yeah, no, obviously we, I, I hang out with Jack quite a bit. Uh, it'd be huge. Um, you know, he, he had a kind of a scary injury and uh, he's been rehabbing extremely hard, trying to get back as soon as possible. It, it'd be a huge addition uh, for our line and for our team, getting him back out there. He, he's a heck of a player. Um, we're going to go against a really, um, you know, unique defense, uh, you know, having, you know, experienced, um, talented offensive lineman out there will only only help us uh, on Sunday. So uh, his addition would be huge uh, if he can get back this week. Uh, and then the other guy, he said Kareem has a chance to to get back on the practice field and maybe get back on Sunday. What what has this offense been missing without Kareem? I mean, Kareem kind of is our Swiss Army knife. I mean, he can do it all, pass game, run game. I give Dearness a ton of credit. Dearness has played extremely well uh, in Kareem's absence, and then you know in the games where where Nick wasn't there too. Um, but, but Kareem's a kind of a special player for us. Uh, it's kind of tough to truly put into words what, what he brings to the table. Um, but I mean, he, he's just kind of that guy that, that makes everything go. Um, you know, he's again, uh, we're lucky to have a guy like Nick, um, and then having, you know, a guy come in to spell him like Kareem is, um, is, you know, we're, we're lucky to have that because he's one of the most talented backs in the league as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Time for three more. We'll go to Marla Ryder. Right now, our Daryl Ryder and Scott Pepp. Marla. Yeah, JC, just with all the penalties that were kind of nullifying a bunch of really good Nick runs, what, the, I mean, did you guys tell yourself something in the huddle there in the final two and a half minutes? I mean, or everybody focus. I just wonder what happened that you were able to snap out of that funk yeah i mean we had a we had a bad stretch uh of penalties there you know throughout the entire game and you know we knew when you have that those four minute situations you, you got to be perfect um you know you got to get a couple first downs in order to end the game you don't want to give them a chance to give them the ball back so i, I think we had a heightened sense of, of attention to detail making sure that we did everything the right way followed our assignments got our blocks done um and again you you give nick and and the earnest uh, a tiny opening, they're going to take advantage of it. Um, and they did a heck of a job making sure to keep the legs moving and get as many yards as possible. And we were able to um, to run the clock out, not having to give the ball back, which is always um, a, a huge thing for, for the offensive line and the offense to be able to execute in those four-minute situations. Just one more quick thing about what you were saying about the offensive line and the quarterback and the running backs. Does that what, celebrate getting together? Is that in the locker room after the game? Mm -hmm. Just wanted, yeah. Okay, just wanted yeah. to check that out. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marla. Go to Daryl Ryder. Hey, JC, you mentioned how just everything's still in front of you, even though maybe at six and five, you guys aren't where you thought you'd be or hope to be, et cetera. Um, there doesn't seem to be anyone really pulling away uh, across the league. I'm it just, you know, from your perspective, is that just a sign of uh, just how well balanced the, the league is this year? Why, why do you think that is that there isn't that one dominating team that we're used to seeing on an, on a yearly basis? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of parity this year, um, you know, which is, which is good for us. I mean, we, you know, we've kind of um, been wobbling at that 500 mark and now we have a chance to kind of make a quick jump in, in two weeks to get to the bye week and, and hopefully get well above it. But 
Uh, no, it's just been um, a pretty even across the the board league. I mean, you look at the NFC, and I think almost every team's or you know going into last week, I think I saw that every team other than Detroit was within one game of of the wild card spot there. Um, so it's going to be an exciting finish of the league because kind of everybody's still fighting for it, everybody's still in it. Um, so it'll be uh, it'll be an interesting thing for the for the fans to watch. And I have a COVID question for you. This is the players are very active in the community this time of year uh, with, with the holidays, doing a lot of charitable events and, and things like that. Obviously, teams can't tell players not to do those type of things. Uh, that That's obviously against the rules. But just to, from your perspective as the union president, um, is, is there a little trepidation just with some of the, the, the spikes uh, out there in the general population of, of COVID cases right now with, you know, having a, a lot of guys out in the community, regardless of vaccination? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we saw last year, we, we go how our communities go. Um, and, and we saw that kind of track with us last year as, as it, um, positives in the community rose, the positives on those teams rose as well. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Again, we know how to mitigate the spread. Um, you know, if, if you're worried about those interactions, even if you're vaccinated, you can mask up. Um, you can make sure that you're, you know, very aware of, of your symptoms and the symptoms of people around you, especially, you know, we talked about it today, uh, with Thanksgiving coming up and, and having, um, you know, families coming into town, just being very cognizant and making sure everybody's aware who's coming into your house or going to interact with you, you know, make sure, um, they let you know if they're not feeling well, if they have the sniffles, if they, you know, just to, to be super aware of that. So you, um, uh, understand the the risks and and make sure that you know if you need to get tested or you need them to get tested that's available. Um, again, it's just doing the right thing. We we went through it last year, um, and it's going to be the same thing we went through this year. Hey Daryl, final question to Scott Patrick. Hey JC, I got two quick ones for you on the penalties. Um, Kevin stressed it for a long time. He's frustrated by it. How do you guys go about not having those pre snap penalties? Yeah, um, if the if the answer was easy, it would be uh, quick to stop. Um, you know, it, it's just focus uh, at this point. It, it's just understanding um, you, you need to be hyper aware and, and hyper focused to avoid those. And I mean, those are just purely mental lapses. The, the pre stat penalties; those are all a hundred percent avoidable. Um, and we just have to do a better job as players. I mean, there, there's nothing can't coach that out of us. I mean, we just, we just have to do our jobs. Um, so that's just something we as, as players need to make sure we execute better, um, you know, before the snap. And with the Ravens, they keep winning games where they look like they're going to lose them. They win again yesterday without Lamar. So what does that say about them as an organization? And we, even with all those injuries that they keep finding ways to win? Yeah. I mean, that's the name of the game. You know, like I said earlier, it doesn't have to always look pretty, um, you know, winning ugly, still winning. So it, it doesn't matter. They've been extremely resilient this year. A ton of credit goes to them. They've been extremely banged up from the start of the year with, with their injuries and losing a ton of talented players. Uh, and they continue to find ways to win. So it's going to be a great challenge for us. We, you know, I haven't dove into the film on them, uh, um, but, you know, uh, we, we've played them a ton and, and you know, they've, they've been successful for a long time. So it, it's going to be a great test for us. Uh, but they've, they've done extremely well this year of, of fighting and clawing and, um, racking up those wins, even in games where, you know, you kind of take a peek up at the scoreboard and you think, all right, they, you know, they might lose this one by the time you get back to the locker room, they, you know, they win a, you know, 66 yard field goal. Uh, you know, they, they've, they've been able to just find ways to, to win in the end. That's um, uh, kudos to them.